Hello everyone and welcome back to some Resident Evil The Board Game by Steam Forge Games and today we're doing the second floor EC scenario which is a single room and is the first boss fight we're going to be tackling in the playthrough if you're using the expansion content. If you're just using the core box this is an encounter you will not get. Uh, you can't go to the East Floor C at all, you don't need to because you only need three of the death masks and this is how I presume we're getting the fourth. So if you played the video games specifically the GameCube remake you'll know the first time you encounter Yon the snake you don't actually kill him. Most times actually you just grab the item and run away from him which if you're playing as Jill does not end well for Richard but um, either way this isn't the fight to the death with Yon. Um, our goal here specifically if I just read the book here in this scenario the characters must drive off Yon. If Yon is removed from the playing area the players successfully complete the scenario. This is classed as the first encounter. There is a second encounter against Yon, um, and also if you're doing a true solo playthrough, the true solo rule where bosses have 10 less health does not apply here. It only applies to the fight to the death with Yon, and that's specifically because of the rules regarding how he is defeated and driven off. One thing I will mention in the setup for this, it does not tell you which side this is meant to be. I presume it's meant to start on clockwise just because clockwise is the natural inclination because Yon just moves around the outside of the the fight area either clockwise or anti-clockwise and then he prioritizes attacking anybody who's in those middle five squares. Uh, it doesn't say whether or not it starts clockwise or anti-clockwise. I'm choosing that. I, I don't think it really matters. If you were playing with two characters the second character would be down here so equidistant so I'm going to say clockwise just because Chris is there. He has 30 health, that's the attack you pay attention to if Chris gets shoved out the way. He has an AI deck, he doesn't do reactions. There is 6 cards in his AI deck, all the rest of the cards at the top there. That's his second encounter cards, they're in the right order, or at least they were for me. So all that you need to do is separate the ones for the first encounter, shuffle them and make this AI deck. Uh, then we'll go over how we actually drive them off. So, reading from the rulebook, during this scenario, use the Ron Yawn reference card. It would be much less intimidating if it was called Ron. Shuffle the, and then it just lists the six attacks that I just told you about, they were in the correct order, to create the Yawn behaviour deck. The remaining Yawn behaviour cards are not needed during this encounter. Finally, place the Yawn direction card next to the deck. See, that's the bit that doesn't tell you which side. Driving off Yawn, so this is how we actually win. Each Yawn Behaviour card has a threshold value in the bottom right hand corner. If a card drawn with a threshold value equal to or higher than his remaining health, so it gets easier as we kill him, after resolving the card, remove it from the deck. Then roll the d6, there you are. Then you roll that, and if the result is equal to or greater than the number of remaining cards in the Behaviour deck, and draw and discard piles, combined or is the natural roll of a one yon is driven off so say we've removed one card from his ai deck that would mean that there is five left so we'd have to roll equal to a five or a six or a one so we, as long as there's one card removed we basically have a 50 50 chance of driving him off it is a bit weird that the one always equals in a driven off because it seems like higher is better because once you remove one card yeah because it's equal to or greater than the number of remaining hmm weird and then it has some rules if you're just doing a standalone boss fight, but we're doing this as part of the scenario. Item wise, I'm going to I'm gonna have to deliberate what I'm bringing. So we're going to check back in with that, and then we're going to have at it and see what happens. Alright, here's what I've decided to bring to tackle, on, tackle Yon. Uh, I dumped the lighter for, to bring the handgun, because we had some handgun bullets in our inventory at the end of the last episode. Which means we're going to have 15 plus 8. We've got two shotgun shells to our name, so I'm bringing the shotgun. I'm bringing the flamethrower, it currently has six, but we have all that kerosene to refuel it. We'll probably end up having to rely on that. We have our brand spanking new grenade launcher and grenade rounds, so it starts with six and we have another four. It'll do the most consistent damage, but the flamethrower, I think, well, the flamethrower and the shotgun have more chance to do multiple damage. Well, no, never mind, no, because that will do three on a direct hit. So the grenade launcher is actually our best bet. And heals wise, red green mix. And you know what? I was just going to bring the green herb, but I was forgetting if I just bring this huge pile of items over. This is just like the non key items in storage. Uh, we have another red green mix. Yeah, we do. 
So I'm actually going to bring two red green mixes since they don't take up two spaces. And that means we're going to have two essentially full heals. That should be enough for the like weaker version of Eon, I think. Couple of last second things to mention for boss fights. No tension deck, it's a straight up fight. No reaction phase, he gets his turn, although in previous iterations of this board game uh, some bosses did react if you shot at them. Um, and also, so the, some solo rules for boss fights apply in that if it has a AI card that has an attack that results in instant death, which in my opinion shouldn't be a thing even if it is faithful to the game and you had multiple players, but that's besides the point. If you're playing true solo and you're fighting a boss that has an insta-kill card, it will put you on danger instead of insta-killing you unless you're already on danger, in which case you will get murdered. <laughs> so I think that covers everything. Let's begin with Chris's turn. It's a fight, well not, a fight to the driven off, I guess, and we're going to start by unloading two shotgun shells into Yon to see how consistent those can be for us. The first roll is going to set the tone. Well, that is actually two damage, because each one of those does one damage with a shotgun. So, that's, uh, you get a boss health dial. I'm just going to bring it over here so I can use it. So, that puts them down to 28. I believe, I took a brief look at the AI cards in terms of the threshold in the bottom right, I believe we have to get it to at least 20 to even have a chance for him to get driven off. So, that's also probably why the solo rule doesn't apply. And our last shotgun shell. Let's see if we can get as good a roll. No, but we still did one more. That's fine. So he's at 27. I've got two actions left. If I move into one of these middle cross here, he's definitely going to attack us. If I move away, he might not because he has to go around the edge because he's slithering around the outside. So I'm actually going to move here and then I might move again so he's out of range. I'm going to take that chance because I, I, I only looked at the threshold. I didn't look at the attacks. So I'm going to do that. We're going to move two down to there and say that's good enough for our first turn. Shotgun is tapped, and then we just draw the top card of Yon's AI deck, which I have shuffled, and we do what it says. Let's see. Snake bite, move Yon one corner. Oh, so that's how he moves. So he just instantly moves here then. That's scary. Uh, range one, medium dodge, one damage plus a push, and this is a card that would remove if he was at 20 or less. So. I'm going to have to go double check the boss rules as to whether or not one hex for them is actually two because of their size or if it is literally one hex so give me one second. So in the boss section it just lists that as let's see it's number one which is just attack range so Chris is out of attack range so nothing happens as far as I can tell it's not range two because he's a two by two size base. Uh, if that's wrong apologies but I'm reading the boss page I guess it could technically be somewhere on the um, the tile page but you would presume everything needed for a boss is on the boss page if that's not the case that is on them so he is definitely going to shove us next turn though because he's probably going to he's going to move down to this corner here so let's move two and go one two he will still be able to attack us this time for sure but i want to do damage and on that note let's crack out a grenade launcher a couple of times so we don't roll blue dice we roll the lovely red dice which have a one in six chance of failing as I'll now demonstrate. No, actually. So that is the direct hit, which does three damage to the entire square that you'd be hitting if it was hitting normal enemies. So three damage, puts him down to 24, and we're gonna hawk another one at him. Hope for the same result again. Actually did get the same result again. So that is three more damage, and four grenades left in the launcher. So three more damage, Puts him at 21, so not quite enough to do the threshold. That's okay though. So I move twice, shot twice, we do his AI card. Which is rapid lunge, move yon two corners. So he's going to move there, and then he's actually going to move there, which means he shoves us out the way. And to do an evade on that, it's an easy evade, or we take one damage. We take one damage, of course we do, Chris doesn't know how to evade. Actually, oh, I don't, I don't have any defense items. Although I'm not 100% sure you'd be able to use it against a giant snake because you can't in the video game. So he moved to, oh, and then he flips direction. So he's going anti-clockwise now. But first of all, <clears throat> range one, medium dodge, one damage plus a push. I will just try and evade then because I have no choice. Because he does reach us. We actually got the best evade, so he missed us. Very lucky. Chris does know how to evade. It's amazing. 
So next turn he's moving back into this corner right here because he's moving anti-clockwise. And the threshold for that card being removed was one damage, uh, one health rather. So let's move back this way because that will hopefully put us out of range unless he moves twice of course which he might. Actually on that note let's move diagonally then. And we'll fire two more grenade rounds at him because we have them and we have ammo. That's just one damage. Yep, oh no sorry that's two damage. That's so weird that the crit result is the least damage the grenade launcher does. It's two damage on that, three damage on a direct hit, and a crit is one damage plus a push. Weird. Well, okay, that's two damage. So that's him on 19. And three grenades left, although we're firing another one. So two grenades left. And we got a miss. There's the red field luck I was expecting. So we have one action left. Let's crack off three pistol rounds. He's already below a threshold that a 20 card would be removed, so I don't want to waste grenades if I don't have to. So that was three pistol rounds. Pushes do nothing to yawn, so just three pistol rounds wasted of the 15 we get given, but they're free. So that's fine. And then yawn's card. The attack below is resolved against each character in the center square. So the center square is that one. And I presume that means we don't do anything because we're not in the center square. He also didn't move though. Okay. Well, let's crack off three more pistol rounds. Sort of guilt free. Oh, we got one hit and there's one damage. So that puts him on 18. And let's fire three more. I'm just utterly obliterating this 15 ammo. We've only got pushes. Three more. So that's actually used nine. Nothing. Nine, so that leaves us with three more exactly, which we'll use and just tap entirely. Although we do have, we can reload if desperate. Nope, all misses. Fair enough. Now, will this be a card that actually gets removed after resolving? No. Slither, move yon four corners. Wow, so he actually just ends up back where he is. He is going to shove us. Do we take damage from the shove? Nope. But he is going to shove us, so we're actually going to be shoved into the middle. If Yon's movement caused one or more collision attacks, yes it did, don't resolve the attack below. Okay. We got lucky there. So, new turn. Big Snake, still very angry. I'm going to move up one. Meaning we have three actions. And... Let's use a couple of Flamer rounds on him. So the Flamer, twice. First shot. That's two damage. Yes. Put some on 16. And then Flamer attack number 2. Oop. One more damage. Put some on 15. And we have one action left because I moved. Um, let's punt a grenade at him. Putting one grenade left plus the reload. And that is 2 damage. This is a good gauge for like how we'll find the actual boss fight as well. So he's down to 13 health. But there's still no chance for him getting driven off unless... Yes, okay. He is lower than or equal... Well, he's equal to or lower than 15 health. So this card gets removed after we do it. Move Yon one corner. Resolve the attack below against each character in one of the four squares diagonally opposite Yon. Move Yon one corner. Resolve the attack below against each character in one of the four squares diagonally from Yon. So that would be one, two, three, four. But no one's there. So... Let's go back to the yawn instructions. Here we go. Each yawn card has a behaviour threshold. If a card is drawn with a threshold value equal to or higher than yawn's remaining health, yes. After resolving the card, remove it from the deck. Done. Then roll the d6. If it's a 1, it's automatically that he's driven off. <laughs> That's the first one I've rolled, you know, one that die. Well, we don't even need to worry about the rest because if it is that result, Yon has been driven off and the scenario has been successfully completed. So Chris Redfield stands sort of triumphant. The snake is gone for now, but I think we might even just have to do the proper boss fight against him next time unless I go to the gardens instead. But after completing this scenario, draw an item from the C deck and place it in the item box. It has to be the last death mask because otherwise we can't proceed. Yes, there it is. So that means we have all four death masks, which means... Oh, actually, that also means we can go into the crypts instead. 
we can now unlock that with the, the four masks we have. So actually I might go do that instead, because as I said last time, if you do the Garden A scenario with the expansion content, director's cut, etc., before and after it you add two new enemy types. You don't get anything else for doing this scenario, and that's now a dead end in the mansion. You can't go any further on the second floor of the east side of the mansion. We still don't have the helmet key, so that still means our options are limited about where to go. We get back two shotgun shells, we get back two grenades, uh, that puts us at three grenades and two shotgun shells. We get 15 bullets, and the two flamer rounds takes us back up to six. So all in all, not too shabby, and we didn't even use heals, nor did I use the extra grenade rounds we have, so that's good for when we actually have to do the real thing, because the real thing will be much more dangerous. So I wouldn't mind finding some more grenade rounds. Um, we heal back to full. I presume the danger level in the mansion goes up by one because we finished the mission. Still not in the red skull and crossbones yet, but we're getting there. We're getting close. And still no way to reduce it either. So I did say that was definitely going to be a shorter one. Um, I'm curious actually, let's look at what is in the crypts. I want to see if I want to go that way. So let's see here. Crips A scenario. Let's see, is there anything interesting here? I think we're gonna fight the yeah, we're gonna fight the Crimson Head prototype. So that would be a mini boss. That's not an actual boss. It would be a mini boss. That's that might be interesting as well. I already have him painted up as well, so that'll give me more time to paint what I need for Gardens A. Or we could just go try and fight the big snake again. But I don't really want to do two short videos in a row for this series. I think we'll probably go to the Crips and see what happens down there. Don't quit me on it, I might change my mind and go to gardens. But either way, bit of a shorter one this time. First boss fight done in the books. He'll come back with a vengeance though as soon as we go into the deeper side of the west of the mansion. Thank you for watching. Please do remember to show your support. And if you want to go above and beyond to support what I do here on the channel, which is essentially a loss making enterprise, consider becoming a channel member. Uh, you get some exclusive videos including one on how to paint zombies for this game. Or you can press the thanks button if you just want to throw a couple of dollars my way. It is all reinvested in the channel and helps keep the light on. One singular light. Only one, no others. Enjoy the rest of your day and see you next time. Staff for now.